Welcome back to uh, Three Zen Bobos here. So, we were sit standing around having coffee one day in, in the shop, and uh, Jerry came in, and Jerry was our boss at Flight Safety down at Randolph, and he told us, uh, he said, hey, Holliker and Seeley, he said, grab your grips. He says, you're going over to Columbus for a few days. He said, we just lost a T-38. And I said, okay. So we went home and packed, came back, hopped in a jet, and flew over to Columbus. Well, we got there all oh, mid-afternoon, I suppose, got settled in the queue, and then went over to the hospital where they had uh, both pilots. The uh, student was an Iranian student, and the uh, Gib, the guy in back, the IP, was a, a relatively new instructor pilot, um, kind of inexperienced, if you will. So we started chatting with them, and we asked the IP to describe what happened. And he was doing a vertical maneuver, uh, a vertical recovery. So he had the nose up, and they experienced an engine failure of some sort or another. I don't think we ever figured out what that first one is. But he said when that happened, he said he snapped the throttles to idle. Okay. Now, as an investigator, you just got to stand there with a straight face and listen to this. So he said they, he pulled the throttles to idle, and about that time, they lost the second engine. So he's in a nose-high attitude of some sort or another, and he brought both throttles to idle, and he said he, he brought the uh, nose of the aircraft down toward the horizon and then leveled off, and he leveled off somewhere, he said, around 180 knots. He said he didn't want the aircraft to fall into a full aft stick stall. So he held it about 180. And he began going through the uh, air start uh, procedures. And he said uh, he tried to hit the start buttons. That didn't work. He tried to uh, take the throttles and go into AB, which would give us 30 seconds of continuous ignition. That didn't work. He had the student shut the engines off and then hit the start buttons and try to re-engage them. That didn't work. Uh, all the time, he's holding it at about 180 knots and kind of coasting down, you know, as you might expect. The uh, air start envelope in the uh, T-38 for a normal restart is 270 to 310, thereabouts. And so he really needed to kind of push the nose over to get some airflow through the intakes. And like I said, after talking with the um, student, he was sitting there watching. He saw EGT on both engines. Well, you can't have EGT with the engines totally dead. Um, AGT is fire, and fire in the engines is good at that point. So anyway, he saw some EGT readings. He didn't know. He didn't remember exactly what they were, but he remembered seeing EGT, exhaust gas temperature. So they're coming down, kind of floating down like this, and finally they get down around. 10,000 feet and uh, AGL, and the IP commands bailout. So he bails out first, as per our procedure, and when he bails out, the nose of the aircraft pitched over, and it pitched over, the engines began to recover. And the Ayatollah, as I, was, I always fondly called this kid, noticed that the um, engines were recovering. So he looks out, and, and starts to pull the nose up to level off for his uh, ejection, he sees a cloud in front of him. So he rolls <laughs> uh, to turn so he can go around that cloud. He didn't want to bail out in the cloud. There's nothing that prohibits us from bailing out in the cloud, but oh well. Anyway, I asked him, I said, what speed do you think you uh, came out of the airplane? So said, I think I came out at about a 350 knots. Okay. Like I said, you just got to sit there. Uh, he punches out, and the airplane just kind of continued on its way. The IP told us that as they were floating down, now he's a little bit higher than the student was because the student had ridden the airplane down another couple of thousand feet perhaps. But he said as they were floating down, he picked up the uh, student's parachute. He said, and then the next thing he noticed, he says this damn jet was coming right at him, and it was going very fast. So it comes smoking between the two of them. 
they're lucky they didn't get hit, I suppose. Anyway, as it comes by, I mean, he said it was going fast as hell. I think Bob Seeley or I, one of the two, asked him, did you notice if it had any canopies on it? <laughs> he didn't notice. Okay. And then it just kind of rolled off and did its own thing. Well, it took us five days to find that jet. What had happened is it had speared in almost vertical. Uh, we found the engines down about 30 feet in that hole. And it hit on a lane on this farmer's property, uh, this lane as it went through the woods. And we, we, tr we recovered both airspeed indicators. One was at 680 and the other was at 675. So that thing was smoking when it hit. Anyway, during this time, uh, as we were out looking for this thing, we met up with this local county sheriff. Now, this guy came right out of the Dodge, uh, the Dodge commercial, if you will. Another overweight guy, yellow shooter's glasses. He picks us up. He's taking us around to all these guys out there uh, in the county and ask him, did you see, he says, these boys lost a jet. He says, you didn't happen to see one go by. One guy, yes, sir. He says, that thing was going that way and it was going the speed of heat. And another one says, no, it was going that way. We had that jet going all over the place. Anyway, we spent a couple hours like that. Um, and then he took us to a local motel because it was a little bit of a distance back to the base. So we get checked in the motel and as we're checking in, he opens the trunk of his car and he pulls out a couple bottles of uh, scotch. And uh, he says, and these these bottles didn't have tax uh, tags on them. That's the first thing I know. But anyway, he handed each one of us a bottle of scotch. And he says, now, he says, you boys got my phone number. He says, you decide uh, later in the night you want a belly warmer. You give me a call here. Yes, sir. So he gave us our scotch. We signed in and went on in. He picked us up the next morning. We looked around for a couple hours, no avail, and then he took us back to the base. All oh, the things that you encounter on accident investigations. At any rate, um, back to the first night and uh, back on base the first night. Later learned that uh, the IP's dad was uh, base commander at Kelly Air Force Base at this time. And at some point during the evening, he got a call from his dad who happened to see the eight-hour accident message that we were required to send out. And he recognized, we knew his son's name and so forth. So he called his kid up and just chewed his ass out for jumping out of a good jet. Oh, man, that was tough to hear when I heard him share that experience. It was just heartbreaking. The kid just had the trauma of... Uh, jumping out of a jet and probably reflecting about it, you know, started putting pieces together, you know, God bless him. But to be chewed out by his dad in a, in an incident like that, I just, I kind of despise that, if you will. The Iranian student, he uh, was taken out of the program and sent back to Iran, and we never heard one thing or another after him. Oh, well, good luck, kid. So... That's kind of the backstory behind the loss of that aircraft. The IP, um, they took a look at them and they decided because of the stigma attached to this accident that uh, it'd probably be best if he went somewhere else in the command. So they sent him out to T-43s out at uh, Mather. And after that, I never heard whatever happened to him. So that's kind of the backstory between behind the um, dual engine failure we had at uh, Columbus in 1979. Charming, isn't it? At any rate, babe, bubble, base gear, stop.